Last week, we tore down the largest domestic inline six ever offered in passenger vehicles in North America. And today, we do the Japanese largest inline six ever offered in North America, the famous 1FZFE. This is the 93 to 97 Toyota Land Cruiser or LX450. It's the 4.5 liter inline six. That's right, it's a 4.5 liter inline six. Now, I really love these engines. These are one of my favorite Toyota engines. In fact, I like it so much that I 5.3 swapped my Land Cruiser. That's right, I do have a Land Cruiser. I have an 80 series that has been 5.3 swapped. There's a huge series of videos on how I did that swap. And the only reason I did that is because this indestructible engine that could never be killed went bad in my truck. And this one is bad too. How do people do this? I know what you're saying. I don't believe you. A Land Cruiser engine can never go bad. Well, I think you can believe me now because this engine's very locked up. There are very many real reasons as to why people love the 80 series Land Cruiser. It's a great chassis of vehicle. They go 300, 400,000 miles quite easily with proper maintenance. And the, the point of this channel is not to show how bad internal combustion engines are. It's to show how bad people can break anything. People will literally ruin the most reliable engine ever. And they'll break it so catastrophically, it's hard to figure out what went wrong first. This is not the most reliable engine ever. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I love this engine, but they have head gasket issues. I've seen plenty of them with rod knock, lower end problems, low oil pressure, burning oil. It's a Toyota from the 90s. It's not, uh, it's, it's not exempt from all of the other issues plagued by vehicles that are not well taken care of. These can be killed, clearly. But we're going to find out why it's locked up. Now, I, I did drain the coolant and, well, not the best. The one FZ FE makes about 212 horsepower and 275 foot-pounds of torque. And it makes that torque down low, thankfully, because these vehicles are very heavy. Upwards of 5,000 pounds, especially if you have big wheels, metal bumpers, like ARB bumpers, winches. I've seen them over 6,000 pounds easily. And I can only imagine how underpowered that feels. My truck felt okay at sea level. When I took it up to Pikes Peak, mm, it was pretty slow. Anyway, we're taking this apart on the ground. This is heavy. When I talk about heavy, we talked about that big block from a couple weeks ago that was just on the cusp of what my Harbor Freight engine stand could handle. And because of how long this is and the actual sheer weight of this engine, I am not breaking an engine stand today. Not happening. But I would like to show you guys what this thing weighs fully dressed because I think some of you will be surprised. Okay, here we go. That's pretty heavy. Now the scale was zeroed out and it is on about a 20-ish pound crate. And it's fully dressed, but still, 662 pounds. That's not going on my engine stand. Not today. I know what you're saying, enough jabbering. Let's get this thing apart. Okay. We're gonna start with the plugs. As always, where else should we start? Well, it has Toyota dated plug wires from 2006, so that's a start. Okay, come on. <laughs> come on. Well, we'll come back to that. Okay, so we just have one plug wire that doesn't want to come out. Let's see what we can do about that. This ought to do it. Maybe just a little longer. It's almost like it's uh, melted or something. Not a good sign. Well, we can get five plugs out. 
So let's do that. Unfortunately, we don't have all six. We just have five. I think one of the plugs and plug wires is actually stuck in the plug well because of water and rust and moisture, much like this one was, but thankfully we were able to get that out. These are Denso plugs, which I like to see, especially in a Toyota. Uh, they are not super great. Now, none of them have been mechanically regapped. There's no piston to plug carnage, but uh, this cylinder here, cylinder two, and to a lesser extent, cylinder six, have clearly been burning some oil. They are very wet, and these are all Really stinky, smell like old fuel. Um, I mean, this truck sat for a very long time, so that would make sense. Now, before anyone says anything, I am saving every bit of hardware that comes off of this engine, as I do on every Land Cruiser that we take apart here. So, we're gonna start on the passenger side or right side of the engine. We're gonna get all of this exhaust stuff off, this valve out of here. We'll get this AC compressor out of here. And then we'll start on the amazingly simple, okay, it's complicated, engine harness, which needs to come off without damage. Oh, come on now. Oh, we're leaking. I don't know if I, I, we're leaking iced tea. So as you can see, someone clearly mistakenly put iced tea with some oil viscous. Oh, that's rough looking. Yeah, so that's, that's what the coolant looks like. I think we're in for a good time here. Now the exhaust manifolds. Now I'm gonna take a minute and continue unplugging some of these many, many, many connectors. I'm actually going to pull the intake manifold and wiring harness together in one piece. I want to take my time pulling the injector clips off. I don't want to break those. This harness is worth quite a bit of money. And now we'll get the egger valve off. Oh, a dipstick. Save that battle for later. Got some thermo switches and sensors to unplug here. I think I have a few bolts left. Let's see here. One right there. Is that it? I think we're ready, folks. It feels ready. Here goes something. Let's see what I forgot here. Oh yeah, there's these clips that hold the harness in. How could I be so foolish? There's a couple of rubber hoses I gotta take care of. All right, I think we're good. Let's try this again. What did I miss? A little thing on the front. Ah, rubber hose. Thank you, air compressor. Next, we'll pull the distributor out of the way. Well, the intake ports look okay. There's some dirt and stuff from when I pulled that intake, but I don't see anything that's too horrendously Damage. There's no, no rust at the top of the valves like it's set with water in it. I can't really see in that one. There's stuff in the way. But yeah, everything looks okay. Well, some unfortunate news, guys. It's not drained. 
I really, really don't want to make a mess in here. No more than I normally do. So we're going to lift this engine up and we're going to drain the oil. And at least we'll get to see what it looks like. Uh, well, that's not oil. Ah. Uh. I mean, okay, there's some oil in there. It's kind of like what, it's kind of like if you poured some iced tea in here. Say it's more like zero W zero, that water stuff. It's a little thicker than that. Got to give it a little credit. And who knows how old this is. Well, while we're dangling here, we're going to go ahead and get this water pump out of the way. See what the coolant really looks like. That's not coolant. I mean, it might have been at one time. Did someone put the wrong oil in the coolant? Look at that buildup on the water pump. Oh, why did I touch that? Why do I always do that? Well, do you guys think it had a head gasket problem? No. No, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to swing this to get as much of the coolant out. I'm sure there's a drain plug somewhere, but just look at whatever that is coming out of there. It's not your normal milkshake. It's like some orange sherbet iced tea stuff. Now I'm going to take a moment to get the thermostat housing, get this stuff loose. It'll just be a little easier to get all the junk out into my drain pans and not on my floor. I'm pretty sure I found the lowest point of the cooling system. This is the drain for the cooling system. So we're going to just see if we can get this out. Sometimes these come out easy and all the other times they're not a Toyota. What? Hey, oh, okay. Well, we're just going to kind of put that back in there because apparently it's drained already. Now we can finally get inside this engine. Let's get this valve cover out of the way. Ha! Ha! Ah! Whew! Well, it's so rusty. Look at the amount of rust inside this engine. This poor, poor thing. Water is not a lubricant. Now we need to remove this plug so that we can get the cam gear off of the cams. And we'll get the cams out of the way. This is usually just set in here with some RTV. I'm just gonna give it a couple soft taps. She comes right out. I don't know how hard this is going to be to get off. Not too bad. Okay, that's just going to hang out right there. Pull these rust sticks out of here. Get it? Rust sticks? They're rustic? All right, that's probably too far. Well, I can't even begin to describe the smell that I'm smelling right now. I hope you guys don't know that smell. If you do, I'm sorry. That's what it smells like. It's, it's rough, but it's fine because it's coming apart anyway. As you can see, this was a very well-maintained engine. Okay, I'm, I'm lying again. This is terrible. That bucket is rusted down with that valve depressed. And the cams are, well, 
They're going in the scrap bin. These are terrible. This whole thing is terrible. Time for the head bolts. There's also a couple of bolts in the front here, some 12s. Hold the uh, cylinder head to the timing cover. And before we go any further, I'm going to get the timing chain tensioner loose. Okay, now I can smell things I wish I hadn't. I'm not sure if I need to get this gear out of here or not. I think it can stay, but we're going to try to get it out anyway. All right, this head should just lift right off. I have no idea how heavy this is going to be. Or if it's actually going to come off. It's unbolted. Completely. All blue. Yeah. Well, it's not supposed to move in that direction, but okay. See, I have no idea how heavy this is. It's not too bad. Well, that certainly looks bad. I don't know what you want to call that mixture of ick. That's certainly no good. Well, this has some clear signs of a blown head gasket right here. I bet you that's one area. It just does not look good. There's definitely some rust at the bottom of the cylinders. I'm not quite sure what was keeping this engine from turning. I mean, we still could have bearing damage from using water as lubrication. We don't really know yet. And here's the cylinder head. You can see it's got some stuck valves. This thing clearly set for a very long time. The inside of this truck is absolutely disgusting. This is one of my parts trucks. And there's not much salvageable. I mean, there's still some salvageable parts. There's, it's a Land Cruiser. There's some signs at the back as well. I mean, there's signs all over. Now I kind of sprayed off this head gasket, so if it looks semi-clean in areas, it's because I hit it with some brake clean. And this is where it looks really bad in the very back. Clearly the next thing we need to do is try to turn this engine over. I mean, duh. I'm sure it's still locked up, but I still want to try. Oh my God. Nope, we're gonna flip that right out of the crate. So, now we'll try to get the crank pulley bolt out. I also have my doubts about this. Time for the big one. Wow. I might have to breathe on it. Well, that is tight. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's really, really, really tight. Let's try a few things here. Okay, I just got done breathing on it. Let's see if that helped. Come on. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Let's see if we can 
crack it loose with my breaker bar. I doubt this is gonna work. No, nope, this is how I go to the hospital, though. Yeah. Okay, so, let's, uh, I don't know what to do now. I have not had a crank pulley bolt this tight since that OM642, and that was tight. I can see the bolt moving back and forth a little. Let's try to work it back and forth. I'm gonna have to call it quits tonight. I think I'm gonna resume this tomorrow. Well, I went out and bought a three quarter inch socket. Let's see if this makes a difference. Not so much. I don't know if that bolt's coming out. I also bought a three quarter inch breaker bar. Try that here. Well, it turns the engine over, but still can't get that bolt off. This calls for some pretty drastic measures. I don't really like what I'm about to do, but I feel I have no choice. I'm sure some of you can come up with ideas of your own, but I like to use the tools I have here. So, I'm just gonna set that there, set this here, set that like so. Put that there, and uh, yeah, let's see if this works.
this is my latest tool purchase, a 2003 K621C. Finally gonna retire my old Cat 910, and for the time being, I have two. So might as well use them. Okay, no big deal. We've got the bolt out. So now we can get the crank pulley off, we can get the timing cover off, I can show you how the power steering pump and how the oil pump works. Let's get started. This should just come right off. Oh, so easy. At this point, what really needs to happen is that I tip this engine over. I actually need to get this bracket off, which is currently holding the engine up on this table. And once I get this off, then I'll put the engine on its side so we can get the timing cover, all this stuff off. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, this seems like it might be dangerous. Yeah, I planned that. Totally planned that. Completely, totally planned. The question is, can I get it on its side safely? Okay, well, that is actually just oil. It's terrible looking, but none of that iced tea stuff we saw earlier. Let's see if we can pull the innards of this out. We'll get that cleaned up in a minute. Now we'll get the power string pump off. Oh, come on. Guess we could always give it a little, a little tap. Stop rolling away from me. All right, there's the power steering pump. And there is rust on the gear. This isn't coming off because it's studded here into the block, it feels like, and there's studs that go into the oil pan, so I'm gonna have to turn this thing on its side. Yay! This is perfection. Okay, it's not perfect. Ideally, this would be on a much bigger engine stand, but we're gonna go ahead and get the lower oil pan off, then we'll get the upper oil pan off, and then we can finally get the timing cover off. Oh. Oh. I uh I pulled some pans before. They don't oh <coughs> they don't smell like that. It is so foul. I can't even begin to describe how bad this smells. And I'm not trying to complain here, it's fine. I mean it's a dirty old engine, but it smells kind of like uh, musty fuel, uh, old oil, mouse nests, and wet cardboard that's been left in the rain. That's the best that I can describe. It just smells like the inside of a nasty car that's been sitting out with the windows Here's down. Here's the contents of the pan. It's crunchy. No really identifiable pieces, but as you can tell, the rest of this doesn't look so hot. Pickup tube has some, that's actually the first mixed oil and coolant I've seen that looks like your traditional milkshake. Vanilla flavored, of course. The rest of this just looks really dirty and nasty. There's some debris on the pickup. It's metal. It's for sure metal. 
Let's start getting this upper pan off. Nope. Come on now. I see. Last bolt. Always trouble. Well, I guess we technically do have some more. And if you're wondering what this is, this is the float for the oil level switch. It's just a switch. It turns on a light on your dash. It tells you you blew your motor up. The light comes on. It's already too late. I'm sure some of you have gotten by with adding oil, but there could have been damage done. Let's see if we can get this lower pan off, or upper pan off, rather. Oh, it's, it's leaking. Oof, it just, it just pooped. What is going on over here? Something is not happy up here. Oh, that looks terrible. Oh, it's just RCV. Almost dropped it. This is what the inside of the upper pan looks like. Pretty bad. And definite signs of water, moisture, coolant in the bottom end. Everything's pretty rusty in here. Okay, now the timing cover should just fall right off. Except it, it isn't. And it's possible that I missed a bolt. It's not likely, but it is possible. Uh-oh. There's a something that it's not supposed to be broken that came out of here. And it looks like that could have been from when I was trying to turn this engine over. Yeah, the inner timing cover has some damage. That's what that piece came out of. And that Unfortunately, it was when I was able to break that crank bolt free. Sometimes parts get ruined in the disassembly process. It sucks. Um, still totally usable. I would have no trouble using it. Whether I'd sell it that way, probably not. All right, now we can get this out of the way, maybe. Okay, well, does this come out? Yes. That's the drive for the oil pump. So it's like that. We'll clean that up at the end of the video. I'll show you what that looks like. In the meantime, let's get this chain rail off of here so we can get the chain off. First, let's get this out of the way. Well, the plastic is still in pretty good shape on this, although there is some cracking on it, but no missing pieces. That's, that's good. Could certainly be worse. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything here. Now this, this plastic is in bad shape. But again, it's hard to say that that happened from, oh, wow. Wow, the timing chain has, has broken. I don't understand how that could possibly happen. Sarcasm, I'm being sarcastic. It's because I used all of the tooling here at the shop to get the crank bolt out. If it had just come out the right way, this would never have happened. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to do here because the chain, there we go. I guess that broke the chain. 
That sucks, now I can't save it. First, we're gonna get this little squirter off. This drops oil on that gear that dries the oil pump. I don't know why I needed to take it out, but I did. It's always better for your hygiene to go front to back. So we're gonna start with cylinder one. I don't know how tight these are gonna be. Apparently tight. You know what? We're gonna do something I don't like to do. We're gonna use the impact on these. I know. And one thing I haven't done is tried to turn the engine over, but I am pretty certain I know what the outcome of that will be. That doesn't want to go anywhere. Well, I got it up to the top of the bore. It doesn't want to go any further than that. It just needed a little convincing. That did the trick. This bore is very rusty. Wow, the wrist pin is locked up pretty bad too. I got one ring out. Nope, all the rings are free, but out surprisingly the bearings aren't too bad there's a few grooves in a couple of them but they're good I mean that's the worst one right there that's I'm very impressed but the rods and pistons tell a different story heavy sidewall scoring and more importantly locked up wrist pins on cylinders one and six. This is so locked up. I can't even move that. And that is likely why that engine was frozen. The rest of these rods and pistons, it's got a little resistance to movement. Some vertical scoring on the skirts, but not awful. This one looks even better. I mean, they're used pistons and this is a 221,000 mile vehicle. So they're not gonna look perfect. But number one and number six, if you can't rotate the wrist pin, you can't rotate the engine. All right, now that the rods and pistons out, we're gonna try to turn the crank over. I know it's probably not gonna spin, but I have to try. I also have to go the right direction. Okay, I was wrong. It still doesn't turn over. Okay, I give. Let's pull these mains off and let's get this crank out of here. Wow. Okay, so really the crank should just fall right out of it, but I have this feeling that's not gonna happen. 
We're going to try to just pull it. Hopefully this doesn't want to go. No, it can't fall that way. Let's try. Yes, we're moving it. Oh, this side moves. Oh, I think we're moving it. Let's uh, put that there to protect everything. Okay. That's heavy. Yep, that's a heavy crankshaft. Something peculiar about these main bearings. Look at how the wear is on one side of them. Now, I can't exactly remember if I pulled them all out facing the same direction, but I, I'm pretty sure I did. That rear one is pretty rough. But if you look at that side of the bearing, there's a lot less wear. And all of the damage, these grooves, are on the one side. This might have a bent crankshaft. The crank actually looks okay, but again, just looking at it doesn't mean it's good. This is definitely something that we're going to send to a machine shop before we even try to sell it. Because if this thing is bent, it's scrap. I certainly don't want to tear up someone's new build. The other halves have some pretty good wear too, but not terrible. A little bit of wear there. The thrust bearings are pretty torn up as well. This is the worst set of thrust bearings I've seen in recent memory. Something I also noticed is that there is a very prominent ridge right here. All the way around every single one of these bars. It's a lot less pronounced in the middle cylinders, but I can still feel it. This engine's going to need overbore if it's even good. That cylinder is probably the worst. The bores also have signs of rust, there's some pitting, depending on the cylinder. What a shame. As promised, the oil pump. I kind of sprayed it off with some brake clean. Here's the outer gear, and the inner gear is driven by this, which is driven by the gear that's on the crankshaft. Pretty slick. That poor, poor Land Cruiser. I, I feel bad. These are really good vehicles, and if they're well taken care of, or even remotely well taken care of, they will still be on the road. But this was likely overheated to the point where it wouldn't run, and then it was left to sit. And I know time heals some wounds, but it does not fix your car. I'm sorry, guys. If your car's blown up and you think time's going to fix it, it's not. It's only going to make it worse. This Land Cruiser might have been worth saving when it first blew up, but 10 years later, it was rusty, filled with rodents, broken glass, and a bunch of body damage. It's a parts car now, and it's sad because they don't make 80 series Land Cruisers anymore. And this same thing will happen to any car. It doesn't matter if it's the world's most reliable car on the planet or the least reliable car on the planet. It will blow up if you don't take care of it. So take care of your cars. You know, let's talk about that crank bolt. I've had some pretty tight bolts on this channel and in my entire career. That might be the tightest. I. Thankfully, I have the correct tooling here to get bolts like that out. Don't do that at home. At all. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy parts off of this engine, or the Land Cruiser it came from, or this Land Cruiser, or this Land Cruiser, or maybe this Land Cruiser, and maybe even this Land Cruiser. Or if you'd like to buy parts off of this 2006 BMW M5, and no, I'm not gonna do a teardown on this 85. It's only an 80,000 mile motor. It runs great. Hopefully I get a core back when I sell this engine and then I'll have a teardown on it. I'm gonna leave our email in the video description. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.